good evening everybody let's do some exercise we'll do that do some upside down push-ups and <coughs> pull-ups all right yeah Ah, okay. Wow. That was interesting. All right, let's do pull-ups. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Whew. One more round of shoulder push ups. Ah, okay. And ah. Ah. Mm. Ah. we we'll do one more round of clubs and then we'll be done. Uh, uh. Uh, that should be good. So how, li how long did it take? Three minutes? Let's see. Less than three minutes. Okay, good. That's all we need. Ah. Phew. Oh.
Okay. Happy Thursday. Uh, Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, everybody. So tomorrow's Christmas Eve. So Yeah, I'm kind of excited because uh my Christmas holiday just begun. It just began. Let me get rid of this spider real quick. Ah. Ah. Lethargic winter spider. Very easy to catch. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm excited because my uh, Christmas vacation just begun. Because tomorrow, day off, Christmas Eve, all the way until Sunday. Okay, so that's like... Thursday, Friday, Thursday, four day weekend, okay? I'm very excited about that, so. Yeah, I th thought about going to Kinai, because I really love that town. But, uh, I might, during this, another, next, four day weekend, the, uh, New Year's Eve weekend, it will be again, four day weekend, so. I might go to Kenai next weekend, okay? But this weekend, I think we got some business to take care of, mathematical business, okay? I think my time is better spent here as opposed to going to Kenai and watch television all day, all right? Yeah. Doing mathematics, I think it's better spending all my time for this weekend, okay, so, because we, we are making steady progress with this pyramid number theory, but, uh, we haven't gone too far yet, so, I think, I should just stay in town and keep making progress with this pyramid number theory, okay, because we are going somewhere with this, okay, so, yeah. So Merry Christmas everybody. Yeah. yeah, we will jump in this sea ocean of wave, ocean wave of numbers later, okay? Let's just relax, okay? Coconut vodka, mm, I like it. Uh, coconut is a little bit sweet, so yeah, sure. It's, I like it, yeah. Coconut vodka. It is sweet, huh? Okay. I guess coconut has some natural sugar in there. Uh. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Hanukkah, too. Hmm. Yeah, happy holidays. So. Uh, Dr. Fauci, he recommended that, uh, no Christmas gathering between families, okay? Uh, I came to respect Dr. Fauci a little bit more than before. Why? I found out, I read he's 80 years old. Eight, eight, zero, eight, 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 wow, he's a survivor, okay? So, he got more respect because ever since I learned that he's 80 years old, okay? I, I respect seniors and elders, okay, because to live that long, that person must be, have some significant wisdom to live that long, okay, so, yeah, but as a conservative and as a, as a scientist, let's do some creative scientific thinking, okay, as opposed to just absorbing what other people say, okay, let's be creative in scientific reasoning, okay? 
a family. Okay, let's say husband and wife. They are not genetically related. Okay, but husband and wife because they live, they have. Let's say they have lived together as a married couple for decades. Then, uh, most likely, the microbe, the all the universe of microorganism in one person's body between husband and wife, pretty much is similar, right? Similar strands of bacteria, virus, fungus, okay? So, probably husband and wife do not pose too much risk to each other because they probably share the same category of microorganisms in their bodies anyway. Because they, they live together, they've been living together for decades, okay? Now, how about their children? Let's say they, husband and wife and their children get together during the Christmas. Would that pose danger? Well, we can think of it this way, okay? So, children, they share some genetic similarity to their parents, okay? So, if their children can handle this virus, bacteria, or microorganism like fungi, most likely their parents can handle those too. Why? Because they have similar genetic makeup, like immune system. Okay? So, so as opposed to total random strangers, family gathering could be safer, relatively speaking, as opposed to some random people gathering. Okay? We can think of it that way. Now, when it comes to marriage, well, in India, there's this uh, arranged marriage, not just in India, Middle East, Asia, back in the days, uh, even still some countries today, arranged marriage. Uh, even in the Europe, it used to be that way, in the West, okay? Even in America, it used to be arranged marriage, back in the days, okay? It has some merit there. Why? Because uh, similar family backgrounds between two families, boy and a girl, right? Similar socioeconomic class, similar background, educational background. Most likely, uh, in terms of compatibility, okay? It will be more likely, higher probability that this boy and girl with similar socioeconomic level, family background, probably it will, it's more likely, more probable that uh, their kind of union, an arranged marriage, would last longer and more stable family kind of marriage as opposed to early divorce okay so because people get into fight because they are different right so similar social background social economic background <coughs> families two families boy and a girl they get married there are a lot of similarity there already all right so even in romantic marriage all right Probably it's a good idea to that uh, boy and man and woman, uh, their parents have some similar socioeconomic level, like socioeconomic class. Probably it will, that kind of marriage will last longer. By probability. Okay, yeah. Because they are more similar than different. They are more similarity. Okay. Right? Hmm? Yeah, it's, it's logical, scientific reasoning there, all right? So. That's all what we encourage here in this version of human knowledge. We want people to be educated in science, logic, mathematics, and apply that creatively in their own life situations, all right? Like apply science, apply mathematics, kind of. Okay? So what we do here have some purpose, okay? It's mathematics education for future generation, okay? So, yeah. So, yeah, thank you for having, uh, spending time with me. And uh, we'll take five minutes break and then either we'll do this or we'll talk about something else, okay? So, <laughs> uh, okay.
Uh. Yeah, before we get into this, one more thing. Um, maybe two more things. Okay. So, Mr. Dr. Fauci, yeah, he literally walks, walks the talk. He said, yeah, he's not going to bring any of his children during this Christmas. It was just him and his wife. Okay. And this is walking the talk, right? But Dr. Birx, his co colleague, another White House doctor, uh, she didn't walk the talk. <laughs> so, she had to resign. She got family gathering, although she recommended against it during Christmas, holiday season, okay, so. She's not the one, not the only one, a lot of governors, governor of New York, governor of California, the governor Cuomo, governor of California, I don't remember his name. I don't think his, his name is worthwhile to remember, to be honest, okay. He used to be a San Francisco mayor, right? He's a good-looking guy, but I don't... I don't see any merit in him whatsoever, okay. I don't... I, he's just a good-looking guy, okay, white guy. Tall, handsome, but I don't think he has good judgment. I don't know why Californians voted for him. Whatever, okay. So, well, how about me? Well, I don't recommend anything. I'm more libertarian in this sense, okay? People, they do whatever, okay? But to hold myself into a higher standard, yeah, I decided not to go to any Christmas events. I've been invited about four or five different events. I decided not to go. Why? I mean, COVID-19 yeah, is more potent disease than common cold and uh, c common flu, right? That much is true. Yeah, it is more potent disease. It's more dangerous, right? More fatality rate than common cold, common flu, right? So 
so I, I just don't think it's ris worthwhile to risk. Okay, I don't think I'll die from it. I don't think I would get sick from it. Maybe I would. Okay, but it's just not worthwhile to risk. Okay, so yeah, just skipping Christmas, just this year, right? Mm. I miss my friends, but. I talk to them all the time anyway. I email them, social media. So, yeah. It's so good. So, skipping Christmas, okay. So, what else? Yeah, uh, so Jijosian lesson, uh, his teacher said, yeah, if a mustard seed, seed, whatever, tree seed, get buried under the ground, then later on, this seed of a tree, we grow up, become a big tree, and benefit many birds. So that birds can nest in the tree branches and right? I guess that's kind of things we that we are doing here, okay? At least I that's what I'm doing. Okay, yeah. If I get a job in a big maybe big cities like Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, okay. I may have fun money, power, fame, right? But I'm doing this instead for future generations sake. Yeah, when I have academic freedom, because I'm a small town lawyer, so it's Monday to Friday, eight, 40 hours a week, that's it. I don't need that much money, but I need a lot of time to devote my time in this academic studying, okay? I mean, I don't have money, power, fame, but I'm getting jobs done cranking out like one paper per month, right? Yeah. Yeah, come next month, next year, yeah, we'll restart writing at some point, okay? But nowadays we're ha having fun with mathematics, okay? So, uh, yeah, it's just because what we do here may have some lasting value, okay? Like, in the long term, like, Maybe I, I might not be at the same rank as Isaac Newton or Socrates, Plato, Confucius or Lao Tzu, Mahatma Gandhi, Buddha or Muhammad Allah or Jesus. But what we are focusing on here is knowledge creation or discovery rather, right? discovery of brand new mathematics and science and philosophy, right? They may have long lasting value, like for centuries or thousands of years, as opposed to if I become a politician or if I go into business, I may have fun in my lifetime, money, power, fame, but I will be very quickly forgotten. But if I dedicate myself into academia, scholastic stuff, science, knowledge, they may last even forever, potentially, right? I mean, Buddha, Socrates, Jesus, Confucius, do you think they will ever be forgotten? Mozart, Bach, Beethoven, Beatles, Beach Boys, Bee Gees, do you think they will be ever forgotten? Elvis, Possibly Moderna too, okay? Yeah, Moderna, Elvis, yeah, during their lifetime, yeah, money, power, fame, yeah. Sometimes that happens during their lifetime too, okay? Sometimes it doesn't. So it depends on the cases. Some people live their lives in total obscurity, but after they are dead, posthumously, uh, they became, their fame become eternal, like Gregory Mendel, Mendel Mendelian genetics or, or Mendeleev, the periodic table. I mean, Mendeleev's case, yeah, he, he, I think he was a professor, okay, so he got decent success during his lifetime. But, some other people, there are some other people who didn't quite enjoy success during their lifetime. Okay, Arthur Schopenhauer, 
he was his case was like this. Okay, he was not famous until later in his years, perhaps his last two decades. He died in his 80s or 90s. He lived fairly long. Okay, or 70s, but he got famous uh, like about his last decade or two. But he did enjoy some fame later in his life. Okay? Kind of late bloomer, right? That happens sometimes. So Immanuel Kant, he was successful and famous during his lifetime as a philosopher, German philosopher, okay? Mozart, Bach, Beethoven, yeah, they were famous in their lifetime too, okay? But there are some other cases where, um, like, Gal Abel, Galua, the two mathematicians in group theory, who kind of died young, unfortunately, okay? Uh, they were not very famous at all during their lifetime, okay? But they became famous after they are dead, right? And their names will never be forgotten, okay? That happens. So it's good that we diet, exercise, good rest, good sleep, rest, relaxation, so that we live very long time, so that perhaps money, power, fame come to us before we die. Okay, as well as posthumously. Huh? So there's some high value in longevity and long life. All right. But if we lo live long, we contribute to humanity even more, as opposed to dying young, right? And we need to learn to take a break, take a good rest, and slow down, right? And to me, smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol helps me to relax, okay, and to slow down. So in my opinion, because I drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes in a very moderate fashion, I think it will probably make me live longer than otherwise. Okay? That's what I think. We'll take five minutes break, okay? So I need some vocal rest. All right, so. Okay. Good, good. So, like Jesus said, yeah, he said, accumulate your wealth in heaven, not on earth. Because if you accumulate wealth on earth, yeah, people will start to steal it. But if you accumulate your wealth in heaven, uh, nobody can steal it. Well, one way to interpret what he said is this, okay, we are investing our time in discovery of knowledge. Studying, learning, discovering, then also teaching too, right? We are investing to our future generation or metaphysical world, knowledge, investing our time toward that, as opposed to making trying to make a lot of money. Well, that's fine. We need people like that. But when it comes to me, I think this is more worthwhile of my time than making more money because I don't need that much money. I just need to pay my bills. That's it. Okay, so. Yeah. Alright, we'll take five minutes break. Okay, so. <clears throat>
Okay. Yeah, I guess we'll do mathematics later, huh? Because there's so many different things that we want to talk about. So, quite recent development in humanology is such that, uh, that this concept of consumption and production of happiness, consumer of happiness and producer of happiness. Okay, can you tell guess what those mean, might mean? I give you like a minute or two, okay, because I'd like to drink some more. It's beginning of my Christmas holiday season, okay, so four day weekend. Plus this evening, Wednesday evening, okay. Yeah. Huh. Finally. Oh. Good to have Christmas. Jesus, thank you for your birthday party. No matter what people's religion it may be, okay. They still enjoy Christmas holiday, I'm sure, right? <laughs> At least they should be thankful to Jesus about that. Christmas joy. Even if they are not Christians, okay, so... Come on, right? <laughs> it's thanks to Mr. Jesus, Christmas. I don't know what mass MAS stands for, but Chris, Christ mass, Christ, right? Yeah. It's good to have Christmas. I mean, no matter what people's religions are, I'm sure they enjoy some Christmas carols, right? And this Christmas season, so. Yeah, let's give, give Mr. Jesus due credit for it's a wonderful season of the year. Hilarity or this Christmas joy. I think there's a fair demand, don't you think? Uh. Okay, so producer consumer of happiness, that's totally different from producer consumer of a product. Right? For example, Sorry about bad hair day. For example, I consume, I'm a consumer of this foreign language websites. Nowadays, I study Russian. Why? Because in Alaska, we have Russians and Ukrainians. Okay. Uh, Alaska used to be Russian territory. Okay. So we have sizable Russian, Ukrainian population in Alaska. Okay. There are two different radio stations broadcast in Russian. Ukrainian language, Russian language, they're very similar, okay? They're almost like different dialects or same, same language, okay? So, so like, uh, so yeah, that's why I'm running Russian. When I was in Los Angeles, California, I studied Spanish. Why? I lived in Hispanic neighborhood. And there are a lot of radio channels. Spoken language is Spanish for Hispanic population in Los Angeles, California. And I've been to Mexico too. Yeah, so. yeah where I go, yeah, if there are sizable foreign language speakers, I, I learn that language. Okay, before I joined the US Army, I studied Arabic because I thought I might deploy to Middle East. And I did. Afghanistan, okay? Yeah. So, yeah, I studied Arabic for a while, okay? So, and, okay, pro so, I'm a consumer of Russian language education websites, which are free, okay? Nowadays, education is free, okay? So I'm consumer of the Russian language education websites. But to study Russian language is a steep uphill. Why? The vocabulary, there are some similar some similarity between English vocabulary and Russian vocabulary. There are some. Okay. But other than that, it's a totally different vocabulary. 
So I had to memorize them. When I study Russian language, yeah, I have, I have some Russian dictionary, Russian grammar book. I'm a consumer of those products, but I'm studying them. I'm studying them. It's like uphill walking. It's not downhill. Okay, I'm studying steep uphill, learning curve, right? I'm working, I'm studying, okay? By doing that, I'm becoming a producer of happiness. It's die dualism, okay? Minus plus, okay? So I'm happy because I'm producing happiness by studying, by working, labor. In Christian language, prayer. In humanology, yeah, we interpret Christian prayer as a labor. Okay. We are praying to God of language, God of knowledge. We are studying, we are working. When we are working, we are serving people. Like in humanology, like people are God. Okay, so we are serving God, serving people, same thing, okay? So yeah. And studying, yeah. Knowledge, it's just like God, God, okay, so praying to God, we are studying good knowledge. Same thing, okay, that's one way to look at it. So, yeah, by studying, I'm producing happiness. Hmm? By working, by studying, by going uphill, I'm producing happiness. So I'm happy, and when I'm happy, I smile, and I'm raising my value, so people around me benefit from the happiness that I produce for myself. I'm like being a plant. Yeah, plants. They, as if they're praying to heaven, praying to God. All these tree branches or grass leaves. Looking toward the heaven to get higher and higher and higher to reach the heaven, to be closer to God in heaven. Yeah, plants, they're like praying to God, heaven, God in heaven, okay? And they're producing, they're photosynthesizing all these carbohydrates. They're working very hard to produce leaves, fruits, tree branches, okay? Animals, herbivores, they're consumers. They're munching on tree bricks and like Alaska moose, tree brick branches and leaves, fruits, right? So, yeah, producer of happiness is the kind of people who work, who study, who go steep uphill. Like if you are here, you are producer of happiness. Why? Because we, what we do here is steep uphill. Is we, we are studying together. Mathematics, science, philosophy, linguistics, politics, humanology, right? That's why not, not many people are watching this, okay? Why? Because it's not something downhill stuff, no, it's up, still uphill stuff, okay? So you and I, we are producers of happiness, okay? So we are learning something, discovering something new, right? Together. So it's like study group here. Okay. So then consumer of happiness. Who are they? I mean, some bullies. Okay. Or like, uh, not, not always just bullies. So we are hardworking, hard studying people. We raise our value. We are elevating ourselves metaphysically, right? We are like cool, like we take care of our appearance, we wash, we smell nice, we do our laundry, we wash our body, we eat well, exercise, diet, we look good, we are presentable, we study, we work. So we are raising our metaphysical value 
and people around us love to interact with us because we focus on personality, character development. We constantly renew ourselves, refine ourselves to be better people, right? And people around us, they love us and they enjoy our company, okay? Or maybe they pick on us, <laughs> bully on us, okay? So they are consumers of happiness, okay? We are producers of happiness, okay? So that's the concept, okay? Quite recent development in humanology, okay? I'll write about that in the next paper. Next paper will be about dialism, minuplosism, pluminosism, and copium arithmetic, copium calculus, all that stuff. Okay, I start writing in sometime in January. Not right away in the January. Why? We got stuff, some, some stuff to do left in the mathematics. Okay, this somehow we are thrown back to this ancient. Humanological mathematics, so pyramid algebra, pyramid number theory. Okay, so we get to the bottom of this first. I don't know how long it'll take. Maybe a month or less. That would be my guess. Okay. Yeah, I mean, who cares about index notation, index convention, right? We do. Why? Because nobody has ever paid enough attention to that before. It's like some intersection between uh, linguistics and mathematics, okay? Indexing notation. Like cancel calculus. I don't think their indexation notation convention is optimal. Okay, tensor calculus, uh, their indexing convention I think they can do better. All right, as it stands, tensor calculus. All right, I think they can do better when it comes to this indexing convention, notational convention. Okay, because I think it's kind of quite a mess as it stands now. Tensor calculus. Okay, so because they didn't spend enough time in this linguistical perspective, what's the most efficient indexing? How to index these numbers, okay? Yeah. Because the way they do it is very difficult to learn because I don't think their current indexation convention is optimal. I think they can do better. Okay, so that's the kind of thing that we are doing. Okay, it's, it's not, I don't think it's been tried before. I don't think mathematicians paid enough attention or devote their time to optimize uh, their notation or convention. Okay, and that's what we are focusing these days. We are doing something quite different, right? Because we are not just interested in mathematics, we are interested in linguistics too the language, efficient, invention of most efficient and optimal language, right? Why? Because we are more than mathematicians. We are linguists too, right? I mean, I don't hold any PhDs, okay? But I did take one linguistics class. I liked it. I got an A. Medicine is confident, okay? Early 2000s, okay. We'll take 10 minutes break, okay? So, because this coconut need a refill of vodka, okay? Let's take 10 minutes break, all right? And then we'll get back to this, okay? So, all right. I'll see you in 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay.
Uh, yeah, let's get some air. All right.
<clears throat> okay. I guess it's time that we do some mathematics, huh? Right, yeah. Let's do it. Let me get some water. So how did I turn on turn off my light over there? I use my feet, my foot like this, like this. Okay, yeah. Woo. That's how I turn off the light when I'm holding things on my two hands. Okay, so. Okay, so, but before we get into, get back into this, okay, uh, so I was invited to some Christmas parties, but I had to decline due to COVID concern, okay, I mean, yeah, I'm conservative, libertarian, okay, so if they want to have Christmas party, I don't think government should mandate anything. <laughs> okay, if they wanna have party, let them. If not, whatever. Just leave it to the judgment of the people. Don't patronize people. Okay, let people do whatever. Okay, trust people's judgment. Okay, and let them take responsibility of their own lives. Okay, it's a very libertarian. Small government, Republican Party, conservative concept, all right? So, but when it comes to me, I want to protect myself. So I love my friends. I miss them. Of course, I want to join them, Christmas parties, but I decide not to. Why? Because I have to protect myself. I have to draw the line. I have to make some tough calls. Why? I don't think I'll die from COVID-19 or I'll get seriously ill from COVID-19 because I do diet and exercise, but I don't want to go through that. What if somebody else in this Chris party, must party got ill and test positive for COVID-19? Contact tracing, even if I'm not ill, I may have to go through this quarantine two weeks 14 day quarantine. I don't have time for that, okay? Quarantine, COVID testing, they may mandate me to take COVID 19 test, okay? I, I, I don't have time for that, okay? I don't. I'm busy, right? So yeah, I decided not to go to Christmas parties. I've been invited to like five different Christmas parties, and I miss my friends. I'm grateful that they invited me. But I decide not to. Okay? Because I don't have time to deal with all that coronavirus stuff, like quarantine, COVID-19, testing, contact tracing. I don't have time for it. I'm busy. Okay? So. Yeah, cost-benefit analysis. Okay? Yeah, my friends, I talk to them all the time, social media, email. Texting, okay, so yeah, skipping this Christmas, I, I don't think it will do any harm in terms of friendship. <laughs> okay, they understand, All right? Yeah, yeah, COVID 19 is something real, but at the same time, yeah, it's kind of hyperbolized, exaggerated. There's too much alarmism going on. I get it. I can see both sides left, right, Democrat, Republican. I can see both sides, okay? I'm kind of in the middle, right? I do exercise do cautions, right? If some grocery stores mandate me to wear a mask, I do. Why? Because I need to buy food. Ma yeah, mask, mask wearing, I don't like it. And I don't wear a mask unless I'm required to. Okay? But 
if they mandate me to shop in this Walmart or some other supermarket, I wear it. Why? Yeah, it's inconvenient, but it's not that big of a deal. So I just wear it, okay? I don't have time to argue. No, I'm busy, right? My time is too precious to waste an argument, debate. I don't have time for it, okay? So I just wear a mask, all right? If they ask me to, okay? If it makes people comfortable, I just wear it, okay? To make to respect their perspective, to make them feel more comfortable around me. I wear it, okay? So because I, I don't have time to argue, debate, okay? So I just wear it, okay? So I carry it in my pocket. Sometimes I forget. I have to get back to my car in the parking lot because I forgot to bring it. So I don't like mask wearing, okay? <laughs> but it saves me more time if I wear it, just wear it, okay? So, because I don't have time to debate, argue, okay? You want me to wear a mask? I wear it, okay? No problem, all right? So, I go back to the parking lot of my car and grab it because I forgot to bring it. Whatever, okay? So, yeah. Okay. Pyramid number theory, right? Okay. So 7C1, one-dimension object, 7C2, two-dimensional object, a plane, triangle, 7C3, well, laser point, okay, oops, 7C3, three-dimensional object, we have big triangle, fourth floor, smaller triangle, second floor, third floor, fourth floor, fifth floor, okay? It's a pyramid, triangle, 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 okay? Yeah. In two dimension, okay, each tuple contains two numbers. So it's two tuple. In 7C3, each tuple has three numbers, like 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, okay? So out of 7, you are picking three numbers, combination, right? So yeah, inside of a tuple, we need an index, tuple index. First one, second one, third one, okay? First one, second one, third one, right? You see this laser pointer? Do you see this laser pointer? Let me try to focus on that camera over there. It's not gonna blind you, all right? You see the laser pointer, right? There we go, there we go, okay. <laughs> it's not gonna blind you because it's filtered through this computer software, camera software, okay, so, yeah. I'm not going to, do not ever stare at laser with your bare eyes. Why? You, you may damage your pupil, okay? But when it comes to this camera, it's not going to blind you, okay? So why? It's filtered by this camera software. It does not get too bright. But do not ever stare at laser pointer, okay? Because it may cause some permanent damage to your eye. Don't ever do that, okay? So, all right. So, four, five, seven, right? Four, five, seven, right here. Yeah, first in one given tuple of three numbers. Okay, tuple index. First one, second one, third one. Okay, so we need that, but outside of that tuple, uh, we need three indices. Okay, column, row and floor, okay? Fourth column, second column, and fourth row, second row, and in what floor? Fourth floor, 
second floor, third floor, okay, so because it's three dimensional object, it's a pyramid. Okay? In second dimension, you have just triangle plane, okay? This is IJ, right? Fourth row, second row, okay, and then fourth column, second column, okay. But we have we need H. H is the tuple index. Inside of a tuple, your first element one here. And second element seven here. Okay? Yeah, triple index we we'll call it H. It's before I J K in matrix notation convention. Okay? Yeah. I grew fond of this coconut vodka, okay, because coconut, I guess, coconut meat has some sugar in there, so it makes it quite sweet. So this sugar kind of neutralizes this alcohol bitter taste. It makes it sweeter, so sweetness of sugar and bitterness of alcohol in vodka, they kind of neutralize each other, okay, so it goes down smoothly, right? It's kind of like cocktail martini whatever but cocktail i don't drink cocktail ever okay that's more for females i mean i don't want to call it girly drinks because they're kind of pejorative offensive sexist misogynist like disrespectful okay so i wouldn't call it girly drinks but yeah cocktail yeah it's too sweet too much refined sugar all right, but coconut sugar, it's all natural. <laughs> Look, it does, it cannot get more natural than this coconut nut, okay? There's a cut it, okay? I drilled in it with drill bit, with electric drill, hand drill, right? You, you want to see this hole? It took me a while to punch this hole, like two, three different places, okay, to make it bigger. Yeah, next time I do this, I will wear gloves, work gloves, because hand drill, drill bit, it can be very dangerous, okay. Yeah. So next time, yeah, I wear gloves, okay. I didn't hurt myself, but yeah, it could be dangerous. All right, we take five minutes break. Okay, so. it's very natural sugar. Okay, coconut sugar. I, I didn't know coconut can be this sweet. But it is very sweet. All right, I didn't put any sugar in there. All right, it's just coconut sugar, and I like it. Okay. <laughs> Coconut vodka, I like it. We take five minutes, okay? So maybe ten minutes. I have some vocal rest, so yeah. Happy holidays. Okay.
All right. So let's take a break from mathematics, shall we? So you know, in general, I have pretty good reputation. <laughs> okay, every once in a while, I have some enemies too. Okay, when I was in law school, okay, I had some enemies, right? When I was in U.S. Army, I had some enemies. Okay. People who are jealous, jealous of me, okay, some people, they are like that, okay, like, they are like burning with jealousy, okay, they want to destroy other people, like, their career, right, yeah, I'm 42 years old, I've seen it all, okay, maybe not all, but I've seen enough, okay, because I used to be a computer programmer, I'm a lawyer now, I was U.S. Army soldier, I was in academia, okay, PhD candidate, I was in Korea, America, I've been to Europe, Afghanistan, so I'm 42 years old, I've been to many different places in the world, many different professions, I worked in McDonald's, drive through crew, subway sandwich, sandwich maker, okay. I've been many different places, many different parts of the world, and I have met many different people, okay. I'm 42 years old, okay. I have some experience, okay. Yeah, this will continue tomorrow, okay. So, let's, I need some space. It's too claustrophobic, okay. It's like, wall closing in on me, okay, I, I I don't want that, okay, I came to Alaska to have more space, <laughs> okay, so, this wiper is defeating the purpose, alright, coming to Alaska, come on, let's put this behind us, okay, let's make some more room, mathematics will pick it up tomorrow, okay, Christmas Eve day, yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, I got some a lot of different experiences because I'm kind of an adventurer, adventurist, right? Yeah, I went to special forces. I dropped out, but still, I had some experience with special forces, U.S. Army. Okay, in South Korea, I've been to this. Very selective, elitist high school, science high school, back in 1994, right? So 1991, 1992, 1993, Korean middle school is three years, right? Korean elementary school, six years. It's like K-12, but American middle school is like two years, right? American high school, four years, right? In Korea, South Korea, American, I mean, South Korean middle school, three years. South Korean high school, three years. Okay, so. So, I was in this science high school, 1994, okay? Seventh grade, in this elitist school, very elitist, okay? Presumably, second best high school in South South Korea. Or South Korea, okay. Very difficult to get into. It's like admission rate is like ten to one, right? Something like that. Okay. So, presumably second best high school in Co South Korea, okay. So yeah, heavy emphasis in mathematics and physics, okay. But I got in, okay. Dropped out after two months, all right, and transferred to regular. <laughs> Hometown high school, okay. Yeah. Story time, okay. Let me tell you some story about that, okay. So, uh, because I couldn't take it. I'm not elitist material. Just like I dropped out of PhD program in Cornell Ivy League School, Eastern Coast in America later on, after two years, I couldn't take PhD in Ivy League School. It was too much. Homeworks. Too difficult mathematics. I love mathematics, but 
I don't want to study kind of the kind of mathematics that's way too difficult and technical. The kind of mathematics that I, do, I have no interest in studying. I want to study easy mathematics, all right? The kind of mathematics is not too difficult. Like, pyramid number theory, okay? <laughs> The kind of things that like, people don't have high regard that mathematicians don't think important, kind of fringe element, neglected area, minority, okay? Not too difficult, but it kind of looks useless, not very beautiful. But yeah, part of me is very much liberal, okay? Some kind of minority, something brand new. Yeah, not spotlight, not mainstream, but something new. So that part of me is very liberal, okay? About minorities, the small things that nobody care about, and also something new, brand new, right? Yeah, some part of me is very liberal, all right? Progressive, okay? Something new, something minority, this ob obscure, Paro mathematics that nobody care about, okay? Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so, so South Korea back in 1993, I was third grade in middle school, ninth grade, right? K-12 in Seoul, South Korea. Yeah, I studied very hard for a year and a half, all right? Yeah, 1993, half of 1992, okay? Yeah. So I got in, okay. That Korean science high school, it was this number one and number two. I applied to number two, okay. Because I, I didn't think I would get it, admission to number one, okay. If I did apply to number one science high school in South South Korea, I could have gotten in because later I learned, okay. Because the number two school, my admission test, score was like but at the very bottom of one third because the number two korean science high school in seoul they selected 180 students okay audition rate 10 to 1 okay later on i heard that uh about one third of the second rank top two science high school uh, their admission score is good enough to get into number one science high school okay i was at the very bottom of one third so i could have barely gotten into this number one science high school if i applied to that but back in the, the, those days 1990s okay they do not allow double application. It's very Spartan. It was back in the days. I don't know how it is now, okay? In America, when you apply to colleges, you can apply multiple colleges, right? But back in 1990s, South South Korea, you can apply only for one major and one school, one college, okay? And these selective high schools, it was like that too. You cannot apply two or three different high schools. You can only apply to one. It's pass or fail. Very strict. It's part time. That's, there, that's how it was Korean education system back then, 1990s. Okay. And I think there's some good value in there. Very disciplinary. It's part time. Okay. When I was there in Seoul South Square in the 1990s, I had a lot of criticism of our Korean education system, okay? But looking back, I think there's some merit to that Spartan strict discipline, right? 1990s, South South Korea, okay? And then look at Korea now. They're doing really well, right? Yeah. Entertainment business, engineering, science, they're doing really well, okay? 
I think it's because the Korean education system strict discipline, like pain and suffering. Okay. Yeah, that's what makes a person stronger. Pain and suffering, strict discipline, tough love. Okay. So back then, I was very critical of Korean education system. It's too inflexible. It's too harsh. There's no creativity. It's like manufactured product. It's like factory. All right. Yeah, I was very critical of Korean educational system when I was in middle school and high school. Okay. I did write some essays about that. Okay. But looking back, I think there's some merit to it. The strict discipline, pain and suffering, Spartan education system. Okay. Yeah. And I did benefit from strict Spartan Korean education system. Okay. Looking back. Okay. It was harsh, right? So, fast forward, I was in the U.S. Army back in 2009, basic combat training for Benning, Georgia, home of infantry. Okay. I was not infantry, I was electrician for helicopters. Okay. But I got my basic combat training for Benning, Georgia. Okay. Yeah, and drill sergeants, they loved me, okay, because I'm older than my colleagues, some drill sergeants, they were younger than me, and I was so educated, I'm disciplined, so my drill sergeants loved me, but my colleagues, they are like at least 10 years younger than me, I joined the USA when I was 31, 2009, I was born in 1978, okay, so, yeah, my colleagues, yeah, they loved me too, but some of my colleagues were very jealous of me, my popularity, maturity, my academic credential, okay, because I joined the U.S. Army after I dropped out of Cornell University, two years in Cornell, Ivy League school, PhD education. So I dropped out after two years, that's like master's degree, computation biology, okay. And I also have a Bachelor of Science degree in computer science. And I had three years of computer programming job experience in the real world outside of academia. Okay. And I'm bilingual, I speak Korean, I speak English, I speak some foreign languages too, like some French, some Spanish, okay. So some of my colleagues in the US Army based combat training was very jealous of me. Okay. But they were mostly younger than me. Some of them were even older than me by like one year or two. Okay. Or three. Okay. Some of them would give me a hard time, try to pick on me, okay. I'm like, Ugh. I drill sergeants, they're yelling at us, okay. Give us some push ups. Sit up to my run, no problem, okay? I enjoy that, okay? When I was in Korea, high school, middle school, we got beat up, right? When we did something wrong. But in U.S. Army Base Combat Training 2009 for Benning, Georgia, they didn't beat us up. They would let us to push up, sit up, to my run, extra, or clean the bathroom, or yell at us. To me, it was too easy. I enjoyed that, okay? No problem, because I grew up in South South Korea, 1980, 1990s, okay? Yeah, yeah, being yelled at, no problem. Push up, sit up, clean the bathroom, yeah, we're used to it, okay? No problem, okay? But, it was my army colleagues in Fort Bank, Georgia, basic combat training, 2009. Fourth year in U.S. Army, active duty, okay. My colleagues, they would pick on me, okay, because I was kind of popular among the sergeants, okay. So they were jealous, okay. They would pick on me, okay, so. <sighs> These high school football players, this future warrant officer, helicopter pilot, Whatever these guys, they could be black, white, Hispanic, okay, they will give me some hard time, okay, so. 
my colleagues, not drill sergeants, not sergeants, okay? My colleagues, same rank. Well, they could be Hispanics, they were Hispanics, whites, blacks, okay? They'll give me some hard time. My same rank specialists, right? And I got almost in fist fight with them. Okay. But we didn't. Why? They backed them up. We did. These guys are younger than me. Yeah, they have, may have lived in United States longer than I had. Or they may have been in the U.S. Army longer than I had. Okay, but those guys are younger than me. Okay, so <laughs> you guys are younger than me, right? You try to bully up on me, try to punk me out. I'm not gonna take that crap. Okay, I'm sorry, right? <laughs> you wanna fight me? Yeah, I fight you. Okay, so I was about to get into really serious fist fight with them. Okay, and they back down. They're younger than me, right? In Korean culture, age means a lot of things, okay? I, you are born and raised in America. Yeah, I was born in America too, but I was raised in Korea. So yeah, my English was not as good as you are. You are, you are English, okay? But I'm bilingual, right? You don't know Korean. You don't speak any foreign languages. Okay? Yeah, so you f speak more English than I do, okay? But I speak enough English, and I know some Korean too. I, when I joined the U.S. Army, I spoke some French, Spanish too, because I'm an avid learner of foreign languages, okay? And I got college degree, okay? And almost master's degree, kind of equivalent, okay? I didn't formally get master's degree, but I went to Ivy League school, okay? I, I worked as a computer programmer. I worked in McDonald's. I worked in... Subway sandwich, sandwich maker, McDonald's, drive through crew, handing out burgers and french fries. After I dropped out of Cornell, Ivy League school, Eastern Coast, after two years in PhD program in computational biology. All right, then I dropped out of PhD and then I came to Los Angeles. Okay, I got a job as a McDonald's drive through crew, making minimum wage. That was year 2006, when I was 28 years old. All right? After four-year degree college, two years in Ivy League school, PhD program, I dropped out, came to Los Angeles to become an actor. And I worked in McDonald's drive through crew. Harsh treatment from my colleagues, customers. Subway sandwich maker when I was like 28 years old, 2006. 28 years old making minimum wage in Subway sandwich. Harsh treatment. Okay. Because I had a dream, I came to Los Angeles, California, from Ithaca, New York, Cornell, to become an actor, okay? So, some of my bosses, superiors, in Subway Sandwich, would get jealous of my dream to become an actor, okay? Very harsh treatment, okay? So, I've been through all that stuff, okay? And I got a computer program job in Los Angeles, California. I did acting, okay? I did make a movie. And then I later on joined the U.S. Army, okay? And then I came to Fort Bank, Georgia, Fort Gordon, Georgia, and Fort Hood, Texas. And this guy's younger than me, okay? Tried to bully upon me. No way, okay? You know what? I'm going to teach you some lesson, okay? Because by then, I was like 31 years old, 2009, when I joined the U.S. Army, okay? All these guys, same rank, specialist, okay? They're younger than me, right? You try to pick on me, I'm not going to let you, okay? No. Yeah, you have no accent, okay? You are born and raised in America. 
You never went to foreign countries, okay? I have. I was 31. They were like 25, 21, 19, 18. You try to pick on me when I'm older than you, when I have lived in planet Earth more years than you. I've been to more different countries and parts of the world, different industries, computer programming, academia, Subway Sandwich, McDonald's, Korea, America. I've been to Europe too by then. Some backpack tra backpacking travel. Okay. And just because you've been to US Army longer than I have, just because you're black, white, Hispanic, you try to pick on me? No, I'm not going to take that. So I got into some almost fist fight with them many times. Blacks, whites, Hispanics, and some Asians too. Born and raised Asian in America. No accent, right? Younger than me, okay? These guys, they try to bully up on me, pick on me, okay? No, it's not gonna fly. No. I almost got to fist fight with them in the US Army, okay? Asians, African Americans, Caucasian Americans, Hispanic Americans, okay? Young people younger than me. Try to pick on me, okay? I almost got to fist fights with many of them. How many? About 10. All right. But they back down. They are younger than me. All right? I was about to teach them some lessons. <laughs> Younger guys trying to bully me? No, I don't think so, okay? I was about to seriously kick their kaisters. They are blacks, whites, Hispanics, Asians in the US Army, okay, younger than me. About, yeah, same rank, the junior enlisted soldiers, like specialists, whatever, okay. I was about to teach their kind stories and teach them a good lesson, life lesson, okay. You younger people, okay, you guys, okay. Yeah, you don't have an accent, I have accent, right? So you pride yourself to be born and raised in America? Huh? Being in the US Army longer than I have? You just got back to Iraq? Deployment? Huh? Yeah, when I just came to Fort Hood, Texas, just after I graduated from AIT in Fort Gordon, Georgia. So you claim some seniority, in U.S. Army, where well, I, I say no, no, you're younger than me, okay? I have been into in this planet Earth longer than you have. I'm like 40, 32, 31, 32, 2009, 2010, okay? You guys, you guys are what, mid 20s, like 25, early 20s, okay? I was about to get into some serious fist fight with them, okay, because they tried to pick on me. Because I got some attitude, right? And they didn't like it. So they tried to pick on me. And I was about to get into some serious fist fight with them. Because by then, I was 31 years old, they are like 25. They may be some high school football star, college football star, so what? Okay, you guys are younger than me. They have more muscle, football star, whatever, baseball, soccer, whatever. They're younger, more energy, more muscles. Yes, so what? You have blacks, whites, Hispanics. You, you, but you're younger than me, okay? So, yeah, by then I was 31 years old, 32 years old. I, I have accumulated some serious martial knowledge, okay? In, at least in theory, okay? 
So let's do up to them, okay? Yeah, you, you guys try to pick on me. You know. No. Okay. There are four banning Georgia, four goals in Georgia, and four for Texas. Right? I said no, and they back down. Because otherwise, I was ready to fight them. Fist fight, okay. So. It's not just fist. Fist, knee, elbow, because I was 31, 32 years old back then, okay. Head, butt, elbow, wrist, fingers, knuckles, okay. What oh, this? Edge of the hand, palm, okay. Yeah, fingers, like, I learned all this many different diverse martial arts skills. I was like 31, 32 years old when I first stationed in Fort, Fort Hood, Texas. Before then, Fort Golden, Georgia. Before then, Fort Bang, Georgia, okay. I was like 31 years old, 32 years old. I learned a lot of my hard skills, right? So, yeah, these guys, more bigger muscle, like American born and raised, they are blacks, whites, Hispanics, Asians, right? Born and raised in America with bigger muscle, like high school football stars. So what? Well, you guys are younger than me, okay? Yeah, I learned some my, many different kinds of martial arts. Right? I was about to fight them. With their try to pick on me. And I said, no. You guys are younger than me. I will not allow you. Younger men, blacks, whites, Hispanics, Asians, I will not allow you to pull up on me, knowing that you are younger than me. Because big part of me is very much Korean. Seniority by age, right? I'm not gonna allow some younger man bully up on me. No, not gonna allow that. I was very ready to fight them. Fist, knee, foot, elbow, wrist, fingers, headbutt, my butt. Torso, okay, there's some torso technique too in Chinese martial art, okay, so Yeah, I, I learned a lot of martial art for three decades. I was like 31, 32, they are like 25 Oh, yeah, you are football star. Yeah, you know how to tackle well close contact, right? Football technique. Yeah, I We have some technique against that too Okay, yeah grappling style yeah, I know some about that too, okay. How do you do it? We take five minutes break, okay, I'll show you, all right. Yeah, tacklers. Yeah, there's some tackling. I, I knew all about that, okay, because I was 32, they were like 25, 21, okay. Football star, former football star, they have whites, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, whatever. I was about to fight them, okay. But they back down, okay, so otherwise I would have fired them because these young people. Okay. <laughs> P U N K, okay, this P U N K, okay. You know what? You're challenging me, I'm older than you. You're younger than me, okay. You're challenging me. I wait I rather call you P U N K, okay. You don't like it? Yeah, I'll teach you some lessons, right? You have no respect for seniors, right? You're so arrogant, full of yourselves, okay? Let me put you down and teach you some life lessons, okay? Because uh, you need to be disciplined, okay? For your own sake, okay? I'll teach you some lessons, okay? So.
You take five minutes for it, please. And we do some martial arts, okay? Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Welcome to humanology. Anything goes. Right? Nothing illegal, nothing immoral, okay? We are doing good things. Okay? Let's do some martial arts, okay? <sighs> These guys. Yeah. Let's take five minutes, okay?
Okay. So we'll talk about some martial arts like wrestling, tackling in this Western football, right? Yeah. It's good, okay? Yeah, do muscle training. Just black people, white people, Hispanic people in America, okay? <laughs> football stars, high school, jocks, okay? Not much brain, but more brawn. They are high school football stars, the blacks, whites, Hispanics, right? I met some of them in, when I was in the US Army. These guys, so proud of themselves, right? Big muscles, okay, they are high school football star, right? Blacks, whites, Hispanics, right? I was like, whatever, okay. Western, Western wrestling, great martial art. Western fencing, great martial art. And you have Western European the sword, great martial arts, okay? Western boxing. Very great martial arts, okay? I appreciate all that, okay? Because I lost Lon Song, okay? Yeah. They're, they're good Western European martial arts, okay? And yeah, football tackling, yeah, they're great, okay? They were great. But when it comes to Asia, you have Japanese sumo. They tend to be obese, overweight, okay? Good martial arts, okay? Yeah, sure. All right, but in Korean wrestling, it's called serum, serum. All right, Korean wrestling style. It's like about tackling this feet. Okay, so what do they do? They, it's kind of like lombok, moose, antelope, right? It's kind of like that. Okay, so yeah, you lower your body, okay, and. Korean wrestling serum is like this, okay? Two guys, right? Like this, okay? Like lower your body so that you don't fall. Because Korean wrestling serum, you lose when you fall to the ground, okay? So they lower their body, okay? Like they like this, and try to tackle this, right? It's great Korean martial art serum, okay? I learned some, okay? So. I wasn't good at it, of course, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I learned some, okay, so... It's about stability, like triangular formation, lower your body, okay? Center of gravity, center of mass, okay, so that you don't fall to the ground, okay? Yeah, like... You put your legs behind so that they don't reach with your legs, tackling, okay, this like, wrapping around, okay. It's like lone bark, two male deer or moose, antelope, okay, like, it's like that, okay? <laughs> so that's the martial art, okay? Now, how about Alaskan bears? I fantasize, okay, I, I don't recommend you do this, okay, don't, right? But as a fiction novel, okay, screenplay, if bear charge at me, in my imagination, okay, I will charge at the bear. Let's say Alaskan grizzly, oh, hungry. Alaskan grizzly bears, they are always hungry. In springtime, they just got out of their den, long hibernation, months, right? They're hungry. In the summer, they're hungry too. In the fall, very hungry. Why? Because they're about to go to hibernation, okay? So bears, they eat people. Why? They don't care. We, homo sapiens, very easy prey. We are easier to catch and eat. For bears, when we swim, we don't swim very fast. When we run, we don't run very fast. And we homo sapiens, we are very easy meal for bears and they eat people, okay? About three years ago, 
I went to Denali National Park. These federal employees in Denali National Park, they would tell me, Oh, bears, they don't eat people. We are not their food. I was like, what? You're a federal employee in Denali National Park, and you say to me, bears do not eat people? <sighs> that was back in President Barack Obama era. So liberal, okay? So LGBT, this gayified, LGBTized. <laughs> oh, teddy bear! Oh. Animals, oh, wild animals, protect them, they don't harm people. We harm people, we harm animals. Yeah, teddy bears, they don't eat people, okay? Oh, la la land, this LGBT gay land. Obama, right? Yeah, President Barack Obama. Federal Park, the Nandi National Park. He and his people, okay? And I said, no, okay, you, you guys living in a la la land. You are telling me bears do not eat people. We are not bears food. Yeah, this Obama and this liberalistic, this democratic party, la la land, all of our environment, protection, this love for animals. Okay. What kind of fantasy are you living? You are a ranger, federal employee in Denali National Park in Alaska. In this, under President Barack Obama, who renamed McKinley Mountain to Denali Mountain. Okay, so you you are saying bears do not eat people. You know what? I, I'm done with you guys, okay, girls. You require us mandatory Democratic Party very dictatorship. Fascism, communism, socialism, okay, you mandate us to carry this can, bear proof can, in our backpack. I said no. Why? My backpack is already full. I cannot accommodate this bear proof. Dumb as this stupid, moronic, imbecilic bear, bear proof can. I don't have my room. I don't have any room in my backpack, okay? It's already too tight. So, no. So I got out of that stupid United National fucking park, okay? I'm sorry for this foul language, but I was pissed and bombed. Okay, this President Barack Obama federal employee, like four years ago, United National Park. I'm out of this stupid place, okay? Too much control, fascism, dictat dictatorial, socialism, communism. President Barack Obama, okay? And his federal employees in Alaska. LGBT, this, oh, para, yeah, people, ethical treatment of animal, whatever, okay? They're delusioned, deluded people, okay? Bears, they do eat people. They don't care. We people, we have easy prey because we cannot run as fast. We don't have any antlers like moose or deer or caribou. We don't have any antlers. And we cannot run as fast as deers or moose or caribous. And we cannot swim as fast as Alaska salmon. And bears are hungry. They don't care. They eat us. They eat people. Okay when they see us. Because we people, we are fatty, we run slow, we cannot run very fast, we can not swim very fast. You don't have any antlers, you don't have any claws, okay? And bears are hungry. They will eat us. Okay? Unless we have a gun. Okay, so I'm kind of pro gun in that sense, okay? And there's no game, no play when it comes to Alaska and hungry grizzly bear who's about to go to hibernation in the fall, in the autumn, or who just got out of his den or her den in the springtime or prime time summer. We cannot outrun bears, out. Martial art bears, okay, 
they be close, they are be tall, they are very fast, and they are very hungry. Okay, so we need guns to protect ourselves from bears' hunger. We need guns, okay? So when I go out there in hiking, I carry my guns, okay? Hollow point, 40 caliber handgun, okay? That's what I have. I have bear spray too, okay? And I practice my shots, okay? So in my fantasy, not reality, just my fantasy, screenplay, novel, okay? If bear charge at me, I will charge at the bear. I'm not going to just sit there and take it, or I will not run away. I don't recommend you to do this, okay? Just in my imagination, okay? If bear come charge at me to kill me and eat me, I will charge at the bear, right? So the jump kick, elbow, knee, alright? Yeah, this jump kicks, okay? And then we see what's what. Why? Because I'm a man, I'm stupid. Right? In my imagination, if a ask and grizzly bear charge at me, I will charge at him too. I will do some jump kick and elbow, knee, right? Okay, <laughs> yeah, this uh, eye poking, right, snake style, or this crotch, go underneath and punch the crotch, reproductive organ, and will like get, somehow get back and twist his neck, wrap around like anaconda and, you know, snap and break his elbow joints, okay, after that, after I kill that bear, because I'm a smoke cigarette smoker, okay, I have a lighter. It's Alaska, there are a lot of tree, dead tree branches. Yeah, I have a knife, okay, in my car. I skin that bear, okay, I eat that bear's steak. Alright, campfire, no problem, okay, so that's my fantasy. Will I do it? No. Why? I'm busy. I gotta study mathematics, physics, humanology, history, foreign languages, philosophy, okay? But I kind of fantasize about that sometimes, right? Yeah. If bear, Alaska and Grizzly bear charge at me, I'm not gonna sit there, play dead. Why? Because I'm very stupid, man. I'm dumb. When bear charge at me, I will charge at him or her, right? And I fight. In my imagination, fantasy, okay? I don't recommend you doing this because that's stupid, okay? So, but I am stupid, okay? So when bear charge at me, I will charge at him or her, okay? And uh, you see what's all, okay? So. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna play that. I'm not gonna run away. I'm gonna just sit there still. So that this bear come and kill me and eat me. No. You come at me, I will come at you too. We'll see what's what. If I end up killing you, Alaskan grizzly bear, yeah, I will eat you. I make some fire. All right. I know how to make fire. Okay. I'm a smoker. I lighter. All right. And I cook you for dinner. Okay. All right. Yeah. This male attitude, okay, so. I cannot speak for females, because I'm not a female, right? I'm not a feminist. Male and female 
in my opinion, yeah, they're fundamentally different. Okay, males, we do mechanics, car mechanics, carpentry, plumbing, electrician, computer programming. Okay, we do all these dirty works. Okay, females, they don't want that. Okay, females, they go to dental hygienist, dentist, they become doctors, lawyers, politicians, females. Okay, yeah. They become nurses, doctors. That's great, okay? So, I believe that there's fundamental difference between male and female, okay? Females, they become politicians, presidents, head of state, governors. Yeah, money, power, fame, right? Yeah, they become dental hygienists, dentists, doctors, lawyers, right? Nurses, okay, yeah, they're very caring, take care of people, that's great, okay. We guys, okay, we are kind of geeky and nerdy, so we study these cars, machines, right, airplanes, and we get down and under dirty, right, we get our hands dirty, right, oily, so yeah, we have no problem sweeping the floor, Clean the bathroom. Okay. Some females they do that too. Okay. Homemakers. Okay. But we guys, yeah, like we study computer programming, physics, mathematics, engineering. Okay. And some females do that too. But U.S. Army, U.S. military, computer science or electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. Okay. Civil engineering, carpentry. Plumbing, mechanics, okay, they are mostly males, right? Because it's not quite jive with female, feminine mentality, okay? Females, they are more like money, power, fame, right? They go to nursing, dental hygiene, dentist, doctors, politicians, judges, Lawyers, doctors, plenty of females there. The psychologists, psychiatrists, doctors, lawyers, dentists, dental hygienists, or yeah, politicians, females. Okay, yeah, it's all good. Okay, yeah, we appreciate them. Okay, their profession. Yeah, they become CEOs, business ex executives, MBA, master. Of business administration, all females, okay, yeah, Jewish doctors, lawyers, doctors, entertainers, entertainment, like singing, acting, dancing, females, right, we males, we are nerdy, geeky, okay, so yeah, we want to repair this car, wire, soldering, right, this electrician, carpenters, plumbers, mechanics, computer programmers, okay, it's mostly male, right? Most females don't want that, okay, they, they want glory, right, females, money, power, fame, you look at all these politicians, governors, State level, federal level, all this city level, half of them are females, okay? Money, power, fame, that's what women want. Glory, right? Lawyers, doctors, politicians, half of them females in America in year 22, year 2020, okay? Doctors, lawyers, Judges, politicians, business CEOs, chief executive officers. Half of them, more than half females. That's what they like. Money, power, fame, mammon. Right? Mr. King Solomon said, yeah, you can find one man but you will find no woman.
right? You can find one man, but you will not find one woman. King Solomon said that the book of Ecclesiastes or Proverbs. You may call me sexist, misogynist. Yeah, sure, maybe I am, okay. I respect people's opinions about me, okay. I appreciate them thinking about me, okay. So, yeah, so good. But we guys, we are hardcore, okay. We are softcore like females. We appreciate females, we love females. We are heterosexual, all right? We need females, we love them, they are beautiful, okay? They are better than us in many points. But we guys, we are the ones to get under the car. Sometimes old pen, <laughs> it pour down on us like a rain. Oily, we get oily, we get our hands dirty, right? We go this haywire, this electrical cords behind the wall. Or oh, as a computer programmers, you guys deal with this spaghetti codes without any comments, right? Carpentry, mechanics, computer programmers, plumbers, okay? We deal with this dirty, dingy, dark, Low down stuff, right? Females that mostly, yeah, there's some exceptions, but most females they don't want that. They want to be up there. Ah, oh, I'm a lawyer, doctor, politician, political science, doctor, lawyer, judge, justice, business executive, CEO, MBA. Yeah, more money, high power. Money, power, fame. Oh, we are Hollywood actresses, models. Okay. That's what females want. Okay. So, well, we guys, we do dirty, dingy stuff. Okay. Oily, this car oil, engine oil. Okay. Or car tire, pressure gauging and Electrical, we get zapped. Electrician, okay. I was electrician from helicopter in the US Army, okay. Computer programmer, all okay? right. We deal with the spaghetti code, try to debug, troubleshooting, problem solving, okay. Not money, power, fame, okay. But we have some passion for it, okay. So we do that stuff. Although we don't become money, power, fame, mammon stuff. If we are men, okay? We protect women, children, elders. Although we are not famous, rich, wealthy, powerful, good men, like some of you and me. We want to do the right thing. That's man. Okay. You girls, money, power, fame. You go to law school. You go to medical school. You become with politicians. Okay, governors, mayors. Right? Something glorious, right? Money, power, fame. Yeah, you go to Hollywood, become actresses, models, right? Money, power, fame, right? We guys, some of us, we guys, okay? We are not all about that, okay? Some of us guys study mathematics. The kind of mathematics nobody care about, okay? I cannot speak for women because I'm not a woman, right? If we appreciate women, right? Our mothers, 
grandmothers. They're fantastic. Okay. We appreciate it. But because I'm a man, I can only speak for man. Okay. Because I'm a man. I'm not a woman. Okay. If you happen to be a woman, yeah, speak for women, okay, by all means, right? But we guys, okay, we are geeky, nerdy, we kind of care about things that nobody care about, okay? So, like numbers, symbols, mathematics, for example, okay? So, okay? All right, let's wrap it up for tonight, okay? Thank you. We continue this tomorrow, okay? Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy holidays. Thank you.